I'm in the car while I have a few minutes. I have five practices that are frugal, but might not necessarily be ethical. We want to be as frugal as we can, but at the same time, we want to be honest. So I'm going to tell you what these five things are. And then I'm going to ask you, do you think that they are ethical? And then I'm going to give you some possible alternatives. And then I'm going to ask you for some possible alternatives to these five things. So these are in no order. Mm -hmm. Number one, back when I was young, back like right after I graduated high school, I had this best friend. He and I didn't date. We were just best friends at the time. And we did a lot of things together. We hung out. Well, one thing that he loved to do is he loved to go and see the live plays at the live theater. And the way it worked is while they practiced, I'm, I don't remember how long they had to practice before they could put on a play for the public, but as long as they were practicing, anybody from the public could come and watch them practice for free. And then on the day of the real performance, you had to pay a fee. And I don't remember how much it cost to watch them perform, but the day before the real performance, they had it all together. It was all perfect. So my friend liked to go there the day before the real performance. And he get, got to watch the whole show for free. So that was totally legal. But was it ethical? Number two. Is someone filing bankruptcy when they really don't need to, when they could just tighten up on their finances, but they don't want to tighten up. They just want to be free from all that, and they file bankruptcy instead of paying people what they owe. Now, what they're doing is totally legal. I mean, I've never filed bankruptcy, but I'm sure it has to go through a lawyer and a judge. So I'm sure what they're doing is totally legal. But is it ethical if they could have gotten by without it? Now, I'm not talking about people that will starve if they don't file bankruptcy, but people that really didn't need to do it, but they did it anyway. Number three is... People go into the food bank when they don't really need to. Let's say they lost their job, or maybe they didn't lose their job, and they ran out of money, and they have a stockpile. It may just be a small stockpile, but they choose to go to the food bank instead of dipping into their stockpile. Is that ethical? Now, I'm not talking about people who would starve if they didn't go to the food bank. But that's what the food bank is for, people who would starve. It's for an emergency situation. It's not for people to stockpile their stockpile with. Number four, a motel room. Let's say a motel room only allows two adults. Let's say you sneak a third adult in there without paying the fee for that third adult. Let's say it's a trip you have to make and you don't even want to make that trip. Or maybe you do want to make it, but you just don't have the money for that third adult. And let's say it's grandma coming to watch her granddaughter or great-granddaughter's graduation ceremony and she's not in very good health and she knows she, this is probably her last graduation ceremony that she's gonna get to watch and she really wants to see it but she doesn't have the money and nobody has the money for her to stay in the motel room so they just sneak her in is that ethical and grandma's bones are pretty bad she can't stay at a campsite Number five is an apartment complex that requires an additional fee for every adult living there. 
if you sneak somebody in there, is that ethical? Let's say it's grandma and grandma's on a fixed income and she would be homeless if you didn't sneak her in there. And the waiting list at the senior home is really long. She can't get in there. Or it might be your grown son that's a college student and he's paying all his money for college and he can't afford to live anywhere. Is that ethical to sneak him in? So those are the five things that might be borderline ethical or they might not be ethical at all. So tell me what you think if they are ethical or not. Number one is going to a live play the night before the real performance. Mm -hmm. Number two is filing bankruptcy when you don't really need to. Number three is going to the food bank when you don't really need to. Number four is sneaking somebody in a motel room for free. And number five is sneaking somebody in the apartment for free. So now I'm gonna tell you some possible alternatives. These alternatives might not be the best. So number one, the theater. What my friend could have done is, one, he could have just not watched the play because watching a play is not necessary. It's not food or shelter or transportation or medical. That's a luxury. So he could have just not gone to the theater at all. Or he could have just tightened up somewhere else so that he could pay the full price for the um, performance. Number two is the bankruptcy. If a person doesn't really need to file bankruptcy, if they just need to tighten up, maybe they could call their creditors and ask them if they could lower their interest rate or if they have any type of plans. If you tell them that you're on the verge of filing bankruptcy, they might do something for you. Number three is the food bank. If you do have a stockpile, maybe you could dip into that stockpile. That's what it's for. And if you don't feel you can dip into your stockpile, or maybe you don't have a stockpile, but you do still need to go to the food bank, then maybe after things get better for you, you can make some donations to the food bank. Number four is the motel room. Well, maybe grandma can't go to a campsite, but maybe you and your spouse can go to a campsite and just pay for the motel room for grandma. Or if it's a mom and pop style motel room, maybe you could talk to them because if it's mom and pop style, they don't necessarily have to go by the corporate rules. They get to make up their own rules. No. Explain the situation to them. They might let you have her in there for free. But have a backup plan just in case they say no. And if they do say no, just accept it graciously. And number five is an apartment complex. If grandma has nowhere else to live, then maybe you could have her in your house as a guest. And have her on the waiting list for the senior living. And, and until then, just say she's a guest. So that's the best I could come up with. So tell me if you think these things are ethical and if you have any alternatives for these. And that's all.